like to introduce myself, I'm Amanda Hornby, I'm um, the BDA's on-site trainer and um, I am a dyslexic specialist tutor and I can ac uh, assess for access arrangements and I've just completed my um, training for um, to, be, uh, to diagnose dyslexia and to be an assessor. Um, our poll is asking you, are you a dyslexic empl employee? Um, an employer or a line manager or a manager. So please um, get involved with our poll. Um, I'm going to um, speak to you a little bit later about um, assistive technology that is available um, for everybody to use. But for now, I'm going to hand you over to Helen, who is going to start um, our webinar. So I'll speak to you later. Hi there. Um, I have a slight problem that it's saying that I can't share my video at the moment because it needs to be enabled. So perhaps Claudia, you can sort that out for me while I'm starting to talk um, and I'll wait to share my slides. So I'm Helen Goodsell, I'm the Knowledge and Information Manager here at the BDA. Well, it looks like you can actually see who I am now. I'm the Knowledge and Information Manager here at the BDA. Um, I'm a parent of two dyslexic children and I'm a qualified workplace needs assessor. Um, right, now let's get on with the technical side here of sharing my screen. OK, so before we start, I wondered how are we doing with the, the poll? OK, so looks like we are mostly dyslexic employees, which is good because that's the main focus of our webinar today. But it's also really encouraging to see some line managers and some employers have joined us. And we hope you also find this useful. But just to say that we will also be running um, in a couple of weeks time a webinar specifically for employees. So please do sign up for that if you would like to. OK. So what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about starting with looking at dyslexia in the workplace, but more about um, how it impacts people rather than um, specifically the signs to look for. We'll then be looking at the kind of legal side and the Equality Act, asking whether dyslexia is a disability, um, when the employee duty to make reasonable adjustments kicks in, um, how you might evidence a substantial disadvantage and basically an outline of, of what is a reasonable adjustment. We'll then move on to look at whether you should tell your employer the help and support that's available at work and some simple things that you as an employee can do to help yourself. We'll then hand over to Amanda and she'll take you through assistive technology with an emphasis on things that you can use yourself not necessarily things that your employer has to, to buy for you. Um, and then we'll have a look at some organisations who could actually help. So before we started, I wanted to put up the slide about our BDA helpline. Um, we'll do our best to answer all your questions today, but there probably won't be time. And we also accept that in a webinar, not everybody will want to share some of the specific details, their own questions. So just to say our helpline is there, um, as a phone service three days a week or by email or direct message um, five days a week. Um, don't worry about taking down those details. We will come back to that at the end. So thinking about dyslexia in the workplace, I think it's fair to say that a lot of employers don't understand dyslexia. And that's often the situation um, that dyslexic individuals find themselves in. And this can lead to a load of misconceptions that particularly that it only impacts upon reading, writing and spelling, whereas actually the impact on most employees in the workplace is far wider reaching than that and can include things such as organisation, time management, sequencing, etc. Not all workplaces, sadly, are dyslexia friendly um, and obviously the environment can have a huge impact on people in the workplace. Dyslexia affects around 10% of employees, but many of them are undiagnosed. And I suspect in most workplaces, you wouldn't be able to identify those, those 10%. Um, it's not always picked up at school. So many of those employees won't ever be diagnosed, but there'll also be others who probably were supported at school that has no evidence of that um, dyslexia. So as a dyslexic employee, we would say to you, 
to have a think about the different ways in which dyslexia can affect you. We know that no two people are the same. The impact of dyslexia is different for everybody. Everybody brings their own strengths and weaknesses, and those two will have an impact on, on dyslexia. The other thing to consider is the environment in which you're working and the specific role you're doing. If you're in a role that really plays to your strengths, then that impact may be minimal. But in other roles, particularly maybe as you get promotion and there's more written work involved, then it can become more challenging. One of the things that most dyslexic individuals find is that some tasks in a workplace are really easy and others can be unexpectedly challenging. So is dyslexia a disability? Well, this is one of the most frequently asked questions on our helpline, and it's not a simple answer. Um, we would say if your dyslexia has a substantial and long-term negative impact on day-to-day -day activities, it can be recognized as a disability under the Equality Act. So what does that actually mean? Well, the Equality Act looks at um, mental and physical impairments that have a substantial and long-term um, adverse impact on somebody. And dyslexia meets the criteria of the Equality Act as a mental impairment, although that's not terminology that most of us would use to describe dyslexia. We also know that dyslexia is a long-term condition, therefore it also meets the criteria of being um, a long-term um, disability, covers that. But the difficulty can be in that final part, which is demonstrating that your dyslexia has a substantial adverse effect on ability to carry out day-to-day -to -day activities. We'll come on to that in a minute. But first I wanted to look at when does the employer duty to make reasonable adjustments actually come in? Well, employers must make reasonable adjustments to make sure that workers with disabilities or physical or mental health conditions are not substantially disadvantaged when doing their jobs. And that applies to all workers, um, including trainees, apprentices, contract workers and business partners. So what is this substantial disadvantage and, and how do we demonstrate that? And this can be really, really tricky. And this is one of those things where we frequently get questions to our helpline is um, from an employer saying, how do I demonstrate this to my employer that I do have a substantial disadvantage because of my dyslexia? And we would hope that all em employers would actually um, put in reasonable adjustments to support dyslexic employees, but that, that's sadly not always the case. So if, if you're in a position where you are needing to have to demonstrate that, a diagnostic assessment report is likely to be sufficient evidence because by its nature, it's looking at your um, strengths and challenges and it's comparing those against norms so you're likely to be able to show from a diagnostic assessment um, where you're at a substantial disadvantage. However, we know that lots of people do not have diagnostic assessments, have never been diagnosed, others don't have reports available and actually the cost is often prohibitive for somebody to have a new diagnostic assessment. So what else can you do? Well, Interestingly, the Equality Act doesn't actually say that somebody has to have a diagnosis and to actually evidence that diagnosis. What it says is that they have to be able to evidence that they have this substantial disadvantage. And it might be that you can evidence this from your work. So if you have a think about the specific things that you're having difficulty with, the things that you're asking for your employer to help with reasonable adjustments, which might be assistive technology, for example, or extra training, you may be able to be to evidence that in your work to show your employee that they have a duty to make reasonable adjustments because you are at a substantial disadvantage without them. And it's likely that if you feel that you need reasonable adjustments to help you to do your job, that that is because you are able to demonstrate a substantial disadvantage compared to your colleagues. And if you don't need those things, then you know, most people aren't going to ask for them in the first place. So what is a reasonable adjustment? Well, that's another slightly gray area because what's reasonable 
will depend on the situation and it will vary for each person and each organisation. And actually, it will also vary for individuals within an organisation. So just because a colleague has something that is a reasonable adjustment doesn't automatically mean that that's available to you as a reasonable adjustment because it depends on things like the impact your dyslexia is having on your ability to do your role. It also looks at how effective that adjustment will be to you in overcoming those difficulties you might have. If it's something that completely eliminates any um, difficulty you have, then that's likely to be a very effective adjustment. If it doesn't make a huge difference, then perhaps less so. It will also depend upon the size of the organisation. A large organisation will likely have resources in terms of people and also financial resources, which may mean that adjustments are more reasonable for them to make than it might be um, in an employer who just has one or two employees. And it will also depend upon the cost of putting that adjustment in. So it's very difficult to actually give a list of what's reasonable adjustments, but what we would also always encourage is sort of dialogue between an employee and employer to actually find things that, that work for both parties. And also to consider the reason the reasonable adjustment is being asked for and how um, other ways that that same, um, it's how it could be achieved, which may be a more cost-effective solution. So should you tell your employer that you're dyslexic? And again, this is something that we're frequently asked. And with obviously there will be advantages and disadvantages of doing so. Um, and ultimately only you can decide whether it's something that you feel comfortable doing. I think it's important to say that there's no legal requirement to disclose your dyslexia. Um, and many people don't because of concerns about unconscious bias, possibly prejudice, or maybe even discrimination, which may come from um, workplaces that are less informed about dyslexia and don't really understand um, how to support people. The other important question is, does your dyslexia impact your job? If it doesn't, and you don't need reasonable adjustments to be made, then it may be something that you have no reason to disclose to your, to your employer. But it's important to realise that they don't have to make reasonable adjustments if they don't know you're dyslexic and could not be expected to know. And the other thing to consider is that dyslexic challenges, if they're not understood as dyslexia, may be misinterpreted by your employer you may see them as performance or conduct issues. So what sort of help and support is available? Well, thinking about reasonable adjustments, what type of things can you ask for? And the first is that you might want to have a look at um, policies that your organisation has, and there may be um, the need for amendments or opt-outs from those policies. This is policies that apply to the whole of the organisation to all employees, but may have more of a, an impact on somebody who's dyslexic. And I'm thinking here, you know, for example, of things like hot desking, which might be difficult for dyslexic employees who um, struggle with focus and concentration, who may need a quiet place to work. I'm also thinking about remote working, either policies that say people have to work from home or policies that say people can't work from home. And also one that's often um, the case, particularly in sort of call centres and things, is the use of sort of personal mobile phones, which are often you know, banned during the course of, a, 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 of the work, but may be being used by a dyslexic employee to access um, assistive technology to help them what they're doing. So it's thinking about the sort of policies that, that are there and whether they are causing a, a disadvantage for you. The other adjustments are looking at specialist software or equipment. So, for example, screen reading or dictation software. Um, some of those things are built in automatically, but some people find that they do need the real specialist products that are there. And obviously, those are things that need to be purchased for an individual. And the other one is looking at training, coaching or mentoring. Um, for example, 
working with a specialist, um, dyslexia specialist, looking at workplace strategy coaching um, to help you develop your own strategies, your own coping strategies um, to work more independently in the workplace. And obviously, if you are having specialist software or equipment, then it's important that you also receive assistive technology training to make sure you understand how to get the best out of that. So how else can you get support? Well, we get asked quite frequently about workplace needs assessments and, and whether they're something that somebody should have. So a workplace needs assessment differs from a diagnostic assessment because it's not looking at whether an individual is or isn't dyslexic. It's looking at them and their specific role and their individual challenges. And then it's looking at solutions, reasonable adjustments that could be put in place to help. Um, it can be very helpful in a new role um, where you may be doing challenge, uh, be presented with challenges that, and work that, that you've not accessed before. Um, so it can be helpful to them to look at the sort of things that might come up and the sort of things that will be available to support. Um, it can also be helpful if you've not worked with assistive technology before to actually understand the sort of things that are available. So workplace needs or assessments are available through private providers such as BDA and a number of others, and also through the government funded Access to Work scheme. So quickly, a little bit about Access to Work because it's often um, the, the awareness of access to work is low or it's not understood. So it's a publicly funded service which you can apply for yourself. They will carry out some form of workplace needs assessment. Uh, it might be a phone based questionnaire. It might be um, a visit or a virtual meeting. They then will look at um, what's needed and they can provide grants for assistive technology training, coaching and employer awareness training. Um, there's a lot more information about it actually on the government's website. So looking quickly at some ideas to support yourself and here we're looking at things that actually that you can do um, to help which don't actually require a conversation or support necessarily of, of an employer. So creating templates for writing reports, that's looking at um, things like um, putting together a structure of reports that you might produce frequently. Some organisations have their own, sometimes you're left completely to develop your own. Um, recording online meetings, we all spend a huge amount of our time on online meetings and things like Zoom and Teams all have the ability to record. And that can be really useful. Um, it's courteous, obviously, to get agreement of, of everybody that they're happy for it to be recorded. But generally, those recordings are just being used so people get a second chance to listen to what's being said or to help um, put together notes or minutes and actions from it. Again, Zoom and Teams both have a transcription, which can be useful sometimes to put up on the screen um, while people are talking. Um, some people find it easier to hear and see the words and it helps comprehension on things. For other people, that's a complete distraction. But the transcription can be useful to um, download into a document and add, add your own notes or, you know, um, produce a set of minutes from it. Also suggest requesting agendas in advance of a meeting and any notes so that actually in the meeting you can focus on what's being said in the meeting rather than trying to read uh, and keep up with that and, and kind of multitask. Um, also using things like copy and paste functions for accuracy, particularly in spreadsheets um, where you might transpose numbers or, or miss copy something. So just taking the cut and paste function sort of eliminates a lot of those things. And also keeping a diary or using an electronic calendar to help with organization. Some simple ideas to help with concentration. Um, the first is turning off the various notifications. I don't know about you, but my screen is constantly interrupted with notifications of emails and Teams chat, etc. If you find those distracting, then switch them off. If you're working in an environment where you need to check those things, 
it's building in time to make sure that maybe every half an hour or so you kind of stop and see what those are things have said. Um, putting phones to voicemail, using do not disturb messages, either the electronic ones that you can put up on things like Teams, also putting up a physical sign in the office. If you're working in a noisy environment, using noise cancelling headphones, and some people find that playing white noise and things in the background also helps. But it's also important to build in frequent rest breaks so that you maintain your concentration. And in some environments, obviously, that's easier to do than in others. But if you're in um, something like a call centre where you have set breaks, it's making sure that you use those to do something completely different. So I'm going to hand you over to um, Amanda, who's going to take you through um, assistive technology and how that can help you. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. OK, so um, Helen's gone through some um, other um, ways that you can help yourself. So I'm going to go through some assistive technology. Um, with regards to reading, writing and memory, the three things that dyslexic individuals find particularly difficult um, in varying de in degrees. Um, what I would like to say at the moment is that um, we're not endorsing any anything. Um, I, these are things that I have found myself that have um, been able to um, share with um, you know, along the way with um, different colleagues and people that I've met. Um, so the kind of things that we are looking for with um, help with reading is things like um, apps that you might want to download. So this is um, a, um, a, a, an app that's free. It's um, from Microsoft. It's called Office Lens. Um, and this is something that um, is really very clever. You can take um, a snapshot of um, a document or a receipt or a whiteboard. Um, and what it can do is it can convert it into a Microsoft Word document. And then it uses the immersive reader function that is inbuilt in Microsoft Word um, or Microsoft Office, all of the other applications as well. Um, and what you can do with this, it can read it aloud. You can um, type in um, on in, a, in, a, in a, a, a text box and things like that. So you can add to it and you can um, you can um, manipulate manipulate it any way you want to. And then ultimately you might be able to share it using the email and, and stuff like that. So this is Office Lens. It's a free download um, from Microsoft. So we and we there's technology that will help you with reading. Um, and these are just a, a few examples, but the the technology is developing um, all the time in this market. So we started off with uh, reading pens that would scan maybe one sentence or a couple of lines at a time. And what it will do is it read it out loud for you. And this is helpful if somebody is OK with their reading, but not completely fluent. And they may find um, very long, complex words um, a, dif a difficulty. So what you can do is you can scan it. Um, it's useful as well for those people with English as an additional language because it can have it can translate it as well there is a little headset function so if you uh, don't want to disturb anybody else you can listen to um, the information through the headset as well um, and then it's we've um, they've developed to scanning uh, pens that will scan the whole of the page and if you're studying or if you're learning um, something for work or to get a promotion or something like that, what it can do is it will talk to you and it will ask you comprehension questions about that page that it has scanned. So not only can it um, read it aloud, um, very often they can translate it to another language. They will ask you comprehension questions to make sure that you've understood it and you will talk back to it um, to have that conversation about what you've read. There is also gadgets um, that will actually um, click onto the side of your glasses that will do that for you. So if you are having um, difficulty with accessing text um, because of a, a possible visual impairment as well um, as dyslexia, then this, um, what it will do is it will scan the text that you're looking at and it will read it into your ear. Um, so all of these kind of technologies are, um, are, are developing all of the time. So this is um, scanning pens or reading pens. Um, this one in particular that is called Orcam that I know of, um, that, you know, it, 
that you do need to pay for them, but depending on the kind of software, it depends on the variety of the costs as well. So remember the majority of, uh, of us have a smartphone, I think. Um, there is lots of accessibility functions that is already inbuilt on your device that you may not be aware of. Um, so if you go into your settings um, app uh, in, your, in your smartphone, then there's lots of different things that you can play about with and find something that works for you. And it might be that you want um, everything read aloud. It might be that you prefer to speak into the, the, the smartphone to navigate around it. You might be able to um, make the text accessible by changing the color background or the font. All of these different things are accessible and are already inbuilt. But if you don't know about them, um, then you know fun using a smartphone to your to the best of your ability isn't um, it's not going to be available to you, is it? So it's just about being aware of all of these accessibility functions and what you can do. If you're not sure about how to use them, YouTube is a fantastic resource as well because there is always lots of how to do. Um, videos on anything specific in whatever smartphone that you might have. Um, it, there'll be um, how to videos on, on how to access specific um, accessibility functions. If you're using Chrome and Google Docs, um, there is um, there's all, also lots of accessibility functions um, that are already built in to this. Um, this is called Read and Write. And if you download this app on the Chrome store, then um, when you activate it, you will get this ribbon at the top. And what you can do is you can highlight what you want to be read aloud and you can play the, the, the play button. And again, you can, um, manipulate the, the text however you want to. So you can change the background, you can change the font, um, and et cetera, et cetera. So it's about finding something that, uh, the first of all, which platform you're using most of all, um, whether it's Microsoft or Google or Apple or whichever one it is, um, and then finding the accessibility functions and how um, all of these can help you with your day-to-day -day reading. Something else that is really helpful with Google Chrome are um, downloads that you can you can get through the um, the, the Chrome extension um, function. One of them is called Speak It, um, and what you would do is you would um, search for Speak It and download it. Again, it's it's a free function, and then and if anything that you want to have read aloud on the computer screen, then you would highlight it, right click it, and this um, little icon would come up and it would read it aloud for you. Um, similarly, um, there is something called a read view. And if you sometimes find that um, the whole of the, the, the web page is is too overwhelming to be able to read properly. What the reader view does is it completely declutters everything. So it takes away all of the pop-ups and it just leaves you with the text. Um, and then again, with that, you can manipulate it. You can change the background color and the font and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that is reader view that is also free um, from um, Google Chrome. And you may find um, some of these um, icons, which means that the website is, um, has an accessibility function um, already built in. You'll find it on our BDA website. And what you can do then, if you see some an icon like this or similar to this, it means again that you're able to um, have it um, accessible to you. So you could change the background, the font, you can have it read aloud, etc. So look out for those um, accessibility icons as well when you are um, uh, going through um, the, the websites. Think about your own website as well, your organizational website. Have you got the accessibility functions for um, potential new customers or those people that are looking through your website? Is that something that possibly you might want to invest in? Um, this is um, Microsoft Word um, Immersive Reader and you'll find the Immersive Reader function in the View tab on the top ribbon. Um, this is just demonstrating um, the kind of functionality um, that is um, in, in built, inbuilt into Immersive Reader and is very similar to um, all of the other accessibility functions as well. So as you can see, you can change um, the font, you can change the size, you can see the syllable division if that's what you need. There is the different parts of speech. Does it tell you if it's a noun or a verb if, if you need that kind of function? 
Um, you can also change the language. Um, you can have it translated if you need it into a, um, a different language. When you're reading, um, when it's reading out loud for you, you if you need to, you can um, read one line at a time or maybe just highlight two or three lines. And when it does read it aloud, it, you can change the voice, you can change the speed, but it will also highlight um, the words that is being read so that you can make that connection between what it looks like to what it sounds like as well. Um, so have a play about with this. It's the immersive reader function in Microsoft Word but you will also find it in all of the Microsoft um, apps as well. If you feel that you need to read through colour, um, you don't always just have to have a physical overlay um, to read through. If you are on a computer screen for the majority of the day, um, then you can download um, colour screens um, that are free. So these are two that um, I've found that are free. One's called Color Veil and the other one is SS Overlay. Um, and what they do is they, you can download it and then you can change the color of what you read through the normal screen. And what is clever with this is as well that if you are presenting, um, it stays in through that color as well. So if you, um, if you still need that colour when you are, if you have that position where you're presenting um, some information to your work colleagues, then it will also keep that um, colour on the screen as well. When we think about assistive technology for writing, there are lots and lots of things that could help um, that you might not have, um, have already thought about. So again, instead of having to write notes for um, a Teams meeting or a Zooms meeting, for example, um, then there is that transcription function that is usually there. Um, and it helps with um, note taking. So you're able then to listen to the meeting rather than have to focus on actually taking notes because to be able to do that um, simultaneously is an orchestra of skills um, that not, um, if you're dyslexic, might not be um, automatic. So this enables you to have the, the notes transcribed, then you can email it and you can either highlight the ones, the par parts of the, me of the meeting that um, is important to remember. Um, or again, if it's into a document, it's a digital document, if you need it read aloud, then it can do that for you. Um, I use Grammarly quite a lot. I don't know if anybody else um, uses it. Um, it's a free download, although you can upgrade it if you wanted to. Um, and what this does is it helps you um, with your sentence structures. So, for example, if you've put the comma in the wrong area, um, it will tell you um, and you can change it um, immediately. It will also help you with spelling as well. What I would say, if you're going to download Grammarly, please make sure that it's on um, the UK English or not the American English, because you will get um, some some kind of bizarre spellings as well. Um, so Grammarly is um, you may have seen the adverts um, pop up on YouTube a lot and um, they do advertise a huge amount everywhere. But I have found personally it really does help with um, especially if you send in emails. Um, frequently, then it does help with um, making sure that it um, your emails and your sentence structure is professionally presented. Um, Speechify is an app that um, it can be a free download, but again, you can upgrade it if you wanted to. It describes itself as a reading assistant um, and basically it works very similarly to um, the office lens. It depends on which format is most comfortable for you though so you might find that the office lens um, format is much easier to follow than speechify and vice versa but very often it will do things like um, scan the whole page and it will read it out to you and things like that so all of these kind of apps it's i mean speechify is not the only one but there are certainly lots of them on in the app store that can help you um, and it's it's about finding one that works for you. Try and use out the, um, the free versions first before you invest in buying an app. Meeting transcription is, um, this is a really clever one that I found. This is a free download again from Microsoft. It's called Group Transcribe, this one. And it looks like this on um, the App Store. There's lots of them on there, but I found this one particularly um, helpful. Um, and what this does is, unfortunately, it only works on Apple phones, unfortunately, or gadgets. Um, 
But what it does is if everybody is in the meeting, you all share the same meeting code. And it's especially helpful if you have somebody who is either dyslexic or his visual is um, hearing impaired or somebody whose English is um, an, an additional language. And what you can do is you can talk, say your piece in the, in the, in the meeting, whether it's in your own preferred language or um, English, and it will transcribe it live. But if let's say somebody is French in, in the meeting, they speak in French into the app, it will transcribe into English on to everybody else. So it helps um, with um, inclusivity in all of these kind of meetings. And again, it's a document. Um, you can send it out digitally, have it read aloud, or you can print it off and highlight any kind of um, important information that you need to remember. So it's a re it's, that is um, a, a very clever little app that I found only last week. Um, I just thought it would be nice to, to tell everybody about it. If you are more of a visual um, person who likes to um, produce information in mind maps, then there's lots of ways that you can do this. You can do it either with post-its, a little bit like if you see um, the detective um, detectives on TV, you know, they have that wall with all of the information all mapped out. Um, so you can you can use it like that. Or if you have software, um, Inspiration is just one software that um, I found can be quite useful. And it's a bit like, you know, if you if you need to mind dump information, you can't if you don't want to forget it. So you just need to mind dump it and you might write it down on a sticky note. Or if you're using software like this, you might write it into a box. And then once you've um, emptied your mind of everything that um, you need to say, you can rearrange all of these boxes on the software. Um, and once you're happy with it, at the click of a button, it will, it will write it out as a document as well. So not only will you have an aerial view of your ideas, you will also have um, a written view as well. Um, and which works very similarly with um, post-it notes on the wall. So once you've um, been able to organize your thoughts, then you would take them off one at a time um, and write out your, your report, for example. Um, just that um, the software um, can do it digitally for you rather than um, handwritten. It depends on what works for you, doesn't it? Um, and mobile, mobile device settings, again, um, using this little icon down here next to the space bar is a microphone. So rather than having to have the uh, laborious task of actually writing or texting, um, you can just speak into um, your phone. It might be that you're speaking into a text or an email or um, at the notes page on your on your phone. And what it does, it listens and it transcribes your thoughts. And what you can do then is that you can share it. You can either email it or text, whatever. So it's, um, it's a, a neat way of removing that barrier of having to text or spell if that is something that is that you find particularly difficult. Um, again, you, instead of sending a text, you can send a voice message um, instead, um, if, you, if that's what you prefer. I know that, you know, very often I will say it's easy just to give you a ring rather than go through, you know, lots and lots of text backwards and forwards. So um, if you find that, you know, somebody isn't picking up on the other side and you prefer to um, orally give a message, then please use this function um, to send in as, as a voice text rather than um, a written text, if that is helpful to you. And when we think about a memory, there are lots and lots of apps for um, to help you with your memory as well. So things like um, an electronic calendar, um, these are, there's, a, there's a plethora of them, isn't there, um, on the marketplace in apps and, and software at the moment. But what you might find is in the workplace, it might be helpful if everybody uses um, a group or shared calendar to help keep up to date with what everybody else is going to do. And that will also help if you need to um, ask, dedicate dedicate a task to a, a work colleague you can um, you can all share the same platform and put those in as well um, if you want to use your own um, use the reminder service so that you don't forget what it is that you have to do and have it pop up to just say you know you've got to do this meeting in 15 minutes for example so um, all of these electronic calendars again it's about finding one that works for you um, and your colleagues to be able to help 
Um, this function, which is just what we've talked about really, is um, a voice reminder. It might be that you have something in your head and you don't want to forget, so you can use an audio clip and then um, you'll be able to listen to it as many times as you need to. So say, for example, you need uh, somebody, you're working in a warehouse and somebody needs to pick up five items. The dyslexic thinks, I can only really remember three. Let's put it into my audio clip and I can listen to it and then I can remember um, what it is that I've got to pick up. So it could be something as simple as that. But voice reminders and using the audio functions on your mobile gadgets um, can be really, really helpful. And then um, to help with organisation, task lists and to do apps, there's lots and lots and lots of them on the um, on the marketplace now. Um, it might be that you can use the ones that are already integral to your um, system, whether you're using Microsoft or Google Docs or whichever one you're using. It might be that you need one um, to help organise the whole day or the whole family. Um, so you've got um, things like um, remember the milk, for example, or you want to use the functionality in your own mobile phone. So remember to use um, the technology to your advantage, really, to help you with your organisation. Um, and if you need that shared um, family organiser, for example, then um, then um, please please use them to your advantage. Um, again, with um, organisers, use the alarms and um, digital alarms, for example, if you need to organise somebody else, it might be useful. Um, and you have, say, Alexa, for example, in, in your in your household or in your workplace, then um, use Alexa to um, help you to organise yourself or your colleagues or your family or whatever. Use all of these gadgets to your advantage. It's not cheating. It, it's to help to keep your um, life running smoothly, isn't it? Um, if you're not sure about how to do any of these, YouTube again has lots and lots of videos on there that um, will be really, really helpful um, for anybody who is trying to find out how to do something. And again, there's um, to help with um, reminders, there's um, Post it has. Um, or Sticky Notes has uh, a downloading app and you can manipulate all of those different things um, that we've talked about already, the functionality of them. Um, you can share information, you can have a brainstorming session. You know, if you are um, having a meeting and you want to, you know, take notes, you can um, use Sticky Notes and, and the app to be able to, to share the information that you want to as well. Um, Jack GP chat GPT is something that is really um, quite clever that I found um, very recently. Um, this is um, a function that help, it's an artificial intelligence and I'll try and just, oh, not that one. I'll try, I'll try, that is, um, that link is um, for YouTube. So what it'll do is it will give you a tutorial to um, how to use ChatGPT. Um, and basically what it is, is if you are struggling to write something like emails, you might want to type in something like um, email estate agent pick up keys at three o'clock on the 29th of October. And what it will do is it will write out the whole email for you. And all you'll need to do is to put in the brackets um, the information that is pertinent to that email. Um, you can play about with it. There's lots of things and uh, functionality that you can do with it. Um, my, my, my son is actually um, studying computer science in university and he puts his code in through chat, chat GPT just to check that it reads properly. So it's got lots and lots of functionality to it. So um, that's one um, way that you, can, uh, that you can really use that to your advantage. Um, Helen, I think I'm going to hand over to you to, to finish off. So I'm just hoping that everybody has enjoyed looking and um, being aware of all of these assistive technologies that I've highlighted. Um, if there's anything else that I've not mentioned and you want to share, then please put it in the um, in the in the chat box um, and, and share with everybody else. But Helen, I'll hand over to you for now. Thank you. I'm conscious of time and I'm sure people have got um, some questions they want to ask. So I just wanted to put the details at the end and we will be sharing these slides, um, which is our helpline that we um, showed at the beginning, um, our website, which has got lots of information, um, some of which we've talked about today, and then also um, access to work, 
Citizens Advice and ACAS, who are both um, organisations who can help with understanding more about reasonable adjustments and also ACAS, obviously, if there are any workplace disputes. Okay, I think that's us finished. It's uh, are there any Great. Questions? Thank you so much, ladies. I think that was really informative and really good. Um, so we do have a few questions that have come in throughout with speaking. And also, if anyone is still here and um, would still like to ask a question, you can do so now through the Q&A box. OK, so this question says, is this immersive reader only available on the Internet or Teams apps? Does it work in normal Word documents and Office programs? Yeah, um, Immersive Reader is um, it's part of the functionality of all Microsoft um, apps. So it'll work in um, PowerPoint or um, Word. I'm not sure about Excel. It might be a limited um, availability in Excel. But yeah, um, um, all, all of the, the Microsoft um, Office systems all have Immersive Reader. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so another kind of techie question is, do the reading pens interpret normal handwriting as well as typed document? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Um, although I've not used it on um, handwriting, but um, the best people to ask really is the um, companies themselves. If you're thinking of purchasing one of those and you find um, a supplier, then ask them personally. But I'm sure um, it will be able to help with um, handwritten documents as well. Right. Um, so this next question says, do you recommend employees presenting with dyslexic traits to also be screened for visual stress with okay. the two presenting so similarly? Okay. Um, I would always say go, if somebody is um, having symptoms of visual stress, i.e. that they find that either um, text is distorted or they find it's dis uh, discomfort when they're reading, that they should start with a a proper eye test with a, an optician who can refer them on if necessary um, because there are lots of different reasons why people might be having um, visual difficulties and those should always be investigated to make sure there's no sort of um, underlying cause. Great thank you so this question says I'm a nurse and I struggle with putting things into long-term memory do you have any helpful suggestions for the workplace? Um. I would suggest something like um, possibly if you need to remember something and you've got a pocket, you'd be able to write something down and keep it um, as a personal dictionary type thing um, and carry that around with you. If there's something that particularly that you need to remember, it might be a doodle that will help you remember um, or an icon to help you remember the um, information that's next to it, possibly. Helen, have you got any other ideas? I was just going to say that I think it's about thinking about what works for you, whether that's thinking in pictures or um, words or icons or whatever, but it's finding a way that works for you. Um, most dyslexics have very good long term memory. The difficulty is that kind of repetition, that over learning to get something in there, but it's about finding what works for you. Great, thank you. Um, so this person has asked, can my employer implement reasonable adjustments without a workplace assessment? Yes, they can. Um, and if you understand what you need, I mean, lots of people have used technology before they start in the workplace, particularly if you've been at university um, or at school, you may have had um, technology and you may know exactly what it is that you need in which case um, you can kind of sidestep that, that need of a workplace needs assessment. Um, but they can be beneficial if you're in a new role or particularly if you're new to, to work to understand um, basically what, what's available to people. So following on from that question, somebody has asked, um, do employers have to pay towards any of these reasonable adjustment recommendations through access to work? Yeah, so access to work um, will fund some things and will also um, fund a sort of a proportion of things. It depends on the size of the employer. If you've got less than 49 employees, I think all of it's free over that, then um, organisations are expected to fund part of that, that cost. Perfect. Thank you. Um, 
So a more general one here, which I guess could be applied for lots of different situations. Um, this person has asked, how can I improve my short term memory? These, again, they're, they're really difficult um, things. It, there are lots of kind of things people can do to um, to find ways to do it. But a lot of it is really about finding things that, that work for you. Um, people with dyslexia will all have difficulties with short term or that working memory. Um, some people more than others. And there will be a limit to how much you can make an improvement, but it's finding things that work. And I think, as we said before, it might be that you have to make a note of something or you have to use a voice memo um, to actually help. So it's finding kind of coping strategies and things that help um, where you're actually getting your own challenges. Yeah, I was just going to say that, Helen, find a strategy that works for you. Mm -hmm. It might be that you go through three or four different strategies before you find something um, that is helpful to you. Um, so, yeah, all of those things that I've mentioned about uh, memory, the, the voice recognition, the, um, the, the apps that help to remember the apps, the electronic calendars with reminders and things like that, whatever works for you will help um, to improve the the life of your um your working your day-to-day -day life with your your working memory it's not about improving your working memory it's about how to cope with it thank you um so this person has said that they feel overwhelmed with kind of loud and lots of audio i find it hard to type notes because of the noise in the office is there any recommendations for that so um, I, um, sorry <laughs> sorry helen i was just going to say you work um, head um, cancelling noise cancelling headphones were you going to say that as well I was going to say the same and experiment with things like listening to white noise there's loads of things you can download that make kind of funny noises in the background and um, I know people who use those and think they're absolutely amazing because they kind of focus that the mind on that and um, sort of cut out the things but so yeah it's, again it's yeah. experimenting with different things to see what actually um, and what you might be able to find as well and ask your um your workplaces if this is possible there are like foldable portable cubicles that you can put on your desk and, and that will be um like a do not disturb sign for the rest of your colleagues to, for you to say to everybody i'm trying to concentrate please don't disturb me um and also for things like um, in in the in the headphones um, I found a YouTube channel called Yellow Brick Cinema and they um, play concentration music and it's very similar to the white noise. It, it just it blocks everything else out and it allows you to concentrate. Perfect. Thank you so and one, much. And one final point I'll make on that is if you're able to, it's um, finding different times of the day to do different tasks. So it might be that you can focus on things early in the morning or later in, in the day when it's quieter and then during the day you can't do that. But obviously that's that's not always feasible in the workplace. So this person has said, will we be at the Dyslexia Show in Birmingham next year with more information? And I said, I think we will be, won't we? I very much um, hope so, yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and then the question underneath has said, I have bad handwriting to disguise my spelling. But now I can't read my handwriting, so written notes don't help, as I can't read it back. Do you have a strategy for what else I can do? I can't really use dictate as I'm in a busy office. Um, well, if well, when we talk about using dictate, is there a possible possibility you can possibly have one of those portable cubicles? Um, if you are using dictate, then that will just um muffle out all of the, the noise in the background. Um, apart from doing handwriting, perhaps um, create um, as a, you know, follow a, a typing program to help improve your keyboard skills um, rather than typing. Helen, can you think of anything else? I was just going to say um, a lot of dictation things will work with um, headsets. And I think because so many of us now spend time on virtual meetings, it's far more common to be wearing a headset and a, a microphone to um, to use things in the office. So, you know, experiment with something like that and see if that, that works better. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so this person has asked, can an employer refuse to implement reasonable adjustments, software slash equipment, if they think it will be disruptive in the workplace? They can make a business case as to why it isn't a reasonable adjustment. Um, and 
it, I mean, it's difficult to, to say with actually, um, you know, defining disruption, but obviously if it was going to have a negative impact on everybody else, um, then they could. But what we would hope is that actually you could work together to look at other things to achieve the objective of giving you the support you need with something which may not be the reasonable adjustment that you'd first you know, thought of. So um, work together. But um, ultimately, there has to be a sort of a test of, of reasonable nest in it that has to kind of work both ways. So they can't just say, no, we won't do it. They would have to make a really good case for why it, it wasn't possible to do it and why it wasn't reasonable. Perfect. Um, so this person has said, I'm a new solicitor. Are there programs or technology that I can read very long documents that are hundreds of pages preferably one that will read the document to me so what we haven't really touched on today because we've really talked about um sort of free software and things um is some of the online screen reading things and um you know yes there definitely are um things that would work you know like the sort of text help that that's out there which um will highlight as well as reading at the time and you can change the sort of speed at which it reads back to you and you can change the voices and lots of people find that sort of multi-sensory approach of seeing the words on screen having them highlighted and hearing them really helps with with comprehension Amanda have you got any other um, um, if you do want to invest in um, technology with there's something called dragon software that is a professional um software that will help to um, it, it's dictate, but it will also read it aloud to you as well. And it'll help you to, um, like Helen says, manipulate any very you know large documents. And you can have it so that it is, um, you can tailor it so that there are specific um, jargon that will help you um, to, um, in whichever um, industry that you're in. So I know that the NHS has um, professional, um, the, the Dragon, professional for medical so there will be something probably for um dragon um in in law um and, and for you to be a solicitor so have a look at dragon um software it's not cheap however there are professional softwares out there that um, will help and do um everything that you need them to do so i think this will probably be our last question but um as we said in my last webinar that I did yesterday with Helpline, that our helpline is open and all their information can be found on our website on how to contact them through Facebook, Instagram, email and phone. Um, so if you, your question wasn't answered today and you still feel like you need an answer, then please do go by the helpline and they will direct you to the right place. Our last question says, very specific, but is there any way that apprenticeship as part of a part-time uni scheme can get support as we can't claim DSA as an apprentice and not a full-time student. I they don't know if that's too specific. They should be able to get support through access to work and it's certainly worth checking that, but it would only apply for the work element of the apprenticeship, not for the study element of the apprenticeship, which is obviously um, sometimes where people need the support as well. But yes, they should be able to get it for support in the workplace. And it may be that if they get technology to support in the workplace, that they're also then able to use that te technology on a laptop to access their studies as well. Yeah, speak to the universities um, as well. Um, there'll be like a student um, body that will be able to, to you know, find some help if you're struggling with your studies as well, alongside your placement. Perfect. Well, I think that's all we've got time for this afternoon. Thank you so much for everyone that joined us. Make sure that you um, check out the rest of our webinars that we've got coming up and see if any of those might be useful. And thank you to Helen and Amanda. So great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you for all your um, kind words and your thumbs up and your love hearts and everything. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and Perfect. we'll see you again. See you soon. Bye. Bye.